Hey, what is up guys, Tava here, and today I'm going to be giving you a little look into one of my new favorite plugins for Final Cut Pro, which is called M Cam Rig, and it's from a company called Motion VFX, which sells a lot of paid plugins for Final Cut Pro, but they also have a surprising number of free ones, so let's jump into it. Okay, so if we look at the Motion VFX website, you can see this is the page for M Cam Rig. And as you can see, it says that it is an automatic camera animation plugin exclusively for Final Cut Pro. And of course, you can get it for free, so it's super easy just to download it right here. So once you've downloaded it and have it in Final Cut Pro, where you're going to find it is over in the browser underneath the title section and then M Cam Rig. And then it's just going to be this title right here that you can drag on top of clips. So just for example, let's drag it onto this clip that I recorded the other day for a tutorial. And as you can see right away when you play it back, it zooms in in this really cool animation that eases in and out with a blur in between to kind of suggest that camera blur effect. So if we play it back, you can see it's really smooth and does a very good job at zooming in on a subject you want. And the first thing you'll see is this little icon in the middle, which you can drag around and it will reposition the effect to where you want it in the shot. So you can bring it down to either corner or wherever and wherever you bring it, it's going to end up zooming the camera into that spot as you can see. So that's obviously the most basic and simple part of this effect which works really well on pictures as well as video tutorials and can be applied super simply. But if you go over into the inspector on the right here and under the title section you can see that there are a lot and a lot and a lot of different settings you can change about this to make it look as good as you want. So if we just go through these parameters real quick, you can see what I mean. So first you have the camera positioning, which is basically where the camera is in space. And if you adjust these, you can see it does the same thing as this icon right here. It just moves them around and you can set a keyframe for that if you want it to move in different locations over time. Now the next thing is the camera Z positioning, which is its place in forward and background space. And as you can see, it's automatically set to negative 400 pixels, but obviously you can adjust that depending on how much zoom you want. But by default, it does have negative 400 pixels as the in focus area and anything to the other sides of that, like a camera would be out of focus, but you can change that. And then it has lots of different settings for the different axes and their positioning, as well as their ease in and out rates. The next big thing on the list are the axes rotation. So you can basically rotate any of these axes in 3D space, which can be animated to create some really cool effects that are very dynamic and add a lot to either photos or video tutorials. Next on the list, we have the camera angle of view, which can turn it from a telephoto camera into like a wide angle camera and kind of just adjust the field of view. And then we have the depth of field blur amount, which controls how much of the image is in focus. If you go all the way down, it's all in focus. And if you go all the way up, a very small portion is in focus, but by default, it's around 50%. And then the next setting you have is the focus offset, which controls which area of the frame is in focus. So it can be in the front or it can go all the way back. Next, they have a pixelate option, which I don't really use, but it can kind of make the shot look like it was filmed by an outside camera instead of just being recorded internally or a photo and it kind of adds this just pixel prism effect to it could be used in certain circumstances. And then they have this wiggle effect which basically makes it look handheld so it kind of wobbles around in space. You can change the strength, frequency, and noisiness of this as well as just creating it random, but it is able to make it feel a bit more natural. And then lastly on this list is the background footage effect and you can either have it on or off and basically what this does is creates an artificial background behind your subject because the shot will be moving in space and it can reveal the background which would be black naturally but it creates this kind of gradient color which you are able to adjust in these colors here as well as the opacity and how much it affects the shot. So depending on what you want you can tweak these colors around to create cool effects. But those are really the basics of this effect. There's a lot to work around with and control and you can tweak it in a bunch of different ways to get the look that you're going for. But using this effect even in its most simple settings allows for really cool and unique shots that wouldn't really be possible otherwise. One thing to mention is that this works best with screen recordings or photos or really high quality images and not video clips because video clips can work but it zooms in such a large amount that the quality could be seen as reduced. So it's just important to think about the medium that you're using this effect on and how it might work differently. Before I go, I'll leave a couple example clips of what I was able to make with this effect so you can see and get a grasp on it. I wonder. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll leave the download link for this in the description down below, but if you like this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. I want